Good morning and welcome back to Five Minutes in History and Sutton History from the pages of the Sutton Siding. Um, we're up to episode eight and I found an article about Alma Blum. Many of you will remember her as a, a community resident who was actively involved in lots of things and she was one of my favorite library patrons. So the article today is about Alma, Alma Blum, Homesteader of the Year. At this year's Alaska State Fair held in Palmer, the last two weeks of August, local resident Alma Blum once again captured the top award given to entrants, Ms. Homesteader of the Year. To win this title, Alma had to take top honors in four of six categories and take them she did. She also took home, besides all the ribbons, a Speed Queen washer and dryer. It was not merely accidental nor coincidental that Alma won the top prize. When the premium book arrived in her mail in January and it was announced what the prize would be, Alma decided to go for it. They needed a washer and dryer and what better way to get them by, than by winning them. There was a lot of competition this year for the award and Alma didn't think she had a chance, even though she had won the award the previous year, Homemaker of the Year. Alma and her husband Buzz moved to Alaska from Ohio in 1968. That very year, she entered the fair, submitting a jar of high bush cranberry jelly. She didn't take a prize that year and stopped entering for a period of years. Finally, she thought it would be great to have some nice looking jelly jars for a, for a change from her odd assortment of glasses and decided to enter the fair to see if she could win the ball jelly jars that were offered. In those days, one had to win the best in every class in order to win the top prize. Now it's the best overall entry that wins the prize. Well, she won her jelly jars and after that, she's entered every year. Alma's strongest field is canning. Of the 190 points she received in this year's judging, 111 of them were in canning. She not only makes jams and jellies, but cans vegetables, fruits, and pickles. And according to the judges, her products are unbeatable. She, like other top winners, plans for the fair way in advance. This fall, she's picking berries and freezing them in preparation for next year's fair. You can't depend on the seasons or the crop to produce just right for the fair time each year. Another tip she has for would-be entrants is if you work hard on a Christmas present or some other project and you do a good job on it, remember it come fair time and put it in for judging. All entries must be made sometime within the previous year. The key word here being year. The project doesn't have to be made the week before the fair opens. Buzz Blum, Alma's husband, also enters the fair. He enters homemade wines and beers, along with wild mushrooms, and of course, his unique, beautiful wooden bowls. The Blums also raise a multitude of birds, finches, and cockatiels, and goats. Their goats have won the state championship in the Alaska Dairy Goat Show, and also in the fair. They've lived on their place on the Glen Highway ever since coming to Alaska. Recently, they put an addition on their log cabin, doubling their living space and adding light and airiness to their living quarters. Both Alma and Buzz are encouraging to others who think about entering the fair. The more competition there is, the better for the, st the standards and quality. Besides, you feel better knowing you've won in an area that has a lot of competition in it, Alma thinks. If something doesn't win, she wants to know why not, so she can improve on it for next year. Although Alma, Alma's won the top award the last two years, she'll not be competing in it for next year. Not that she wouldn't like to, but a change in the fair rules this year will not allow her to compete for next year's award. So start thinking about it out there. You could be the top winner next year. So that was in September of 1986. And um, in January of 1987, there was an article about weather, which we're always interested in around here. Think it's cold? Chilly days, cold north winds swooping down the river at us makes us all shiver a bit and huddle in our coats a little deeper. But, but according to the Anchorage Times, 
This weather is balmy compared to the winter of 1947. In January of 1947, the temperatures in the area drop below zero and remain there for the next 22 days, rising above zero only three times in that period. On February 3rd, record lows were set, set including one in Anchorage of minus 38 below, and the all-time North American low, minus 82 degrees, was set in Snag Yukon on the Alaska-Canadian border. Longtime resident Aino Kuapala remembers that winter of 1947. Aino came up to Alaska with the Army in 1943, and he stayed to continue mining coal. That particular winter, he was living up at Eska and working in the Jonesville mine. He seems to recall that it went below zero in November, and it stayed that way all the way through February. Working underground at Jonesville, which was a cold mine, with a temperature around 30 degrees, Eno says he doesn't remember it being too uncomfortable. The miners were only topside at night, and then they were asleep. Besides, Eno adds, I was younger in those days, and you don't notice the cold so much when you're younger. So that's it for episode eight. See you again soon with our next episode.